Keeping It Real. I'm Krista Gibson, your host. I'm also the publisher of NewSpiritJournal.com, where we publish inspirational articles, videos, and audios. Today, my guest is Reverend Judith Laxer, and this is the second in a series where we are talking about the Pagan Wheel of the Year. Reverend Judith is the priestess of Gaia Temple, which is a church she founded in Seattle, Washington, and she has a lot of experience with explaining the Pagan Wheel of the Year. She's even writ a, written a book called Along the Wheel of Time, which has stories that can be used to celebrate the different times of the year. Today we're going to be talking about Spring Equinox, and she's going to explain to us what this is and what it can mean in our lives, as well as giving us some solid ways to actually celebrate not only the actual day of Spring Equinox, but the entire season, which lasts until the summertime. So you have a lot of time to put these ideas into practice. Please come with me now and let's visit with Reverend Judith. Hi Judith and welcome back. It's always such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you Chris. I love being here. Thank you. So you're going to talk to us about the wonders of spring equinox. I can hardly wait. Yeah, well, you know, I do want to backtrack a little bit because there was something very important that I forgot to talk about last time okay. when we were talking about Imbolc, which is the actual beginning on the pagan calendar. That's the beginning of spring. And Imbolc is always on February 1st or 2nd. And the sort of secular holiday that grew out of that is Groundhog's Day. Oh, interesting. <laughs> And it is interesting, too, because what happens on Groundhog's Day is that something from underneath the earth comes out to see if he can see his shadow, right. which is really all about the light, right? Because we can't have shadow unless there's exactly. light. Exactly, right. So it's really kind of like a metaphor, and that's kind of how a lot of, so many of the ancient pagan practices sort of morphed a little bit to sort of stay in our secular society. Right. And so many people have no idea what the origins are. I can't believe I forgot to talk about Groundhog's Day last that's night. That's great. Well, thank you, because that's, that's really interesting to know that. That's great. Yeah, so here we are. We're coming on to the um, vernal equinox, and that's going to be on March 20th this year, which I believe is a Tuesday. Okay. And also the day after my birthday, so I'm kind Happy of spring birthday. day, you know. <laughs> And uh, so the equinoxes across the wheel of the year are the, are the times of equal day and equal night. That's where the equinox word comes from. Um, and so now we're entering into the light half of the year, which most people prefer, you know, those longer sunny days. And so, but on the equinox itself, it's equal day and equal night. So for that 24 hour period, the day is as long as the night. And then once we continue moving forward in time, then the days slowly grow longer and longer and longer. Right. And it's really important to pay attention to the light at this time and not go by the weather, especially because in our era of climate change, right. it's unpredictable. Yeah. And we really can't go by temperature anymore. Right. But we can still see that the days are growing longer, okay. you know. So that's uh, something just to kind of begin of our understanding of what the equinox is all about, that the length of days is growing longer and longer. Be, the nights will be shorter and the days will be longer. Mm -hmm. And since we're such a sun-worshipping culture, you know, that just makes us so happy to, you know, to, <laughs> to enter into this part of the year. But also, you know, it's such a primal thing, uh, a, a primal soothing that we get when we see life return to the surface of the planet mm -hmm. when dormancy ends and the green comes back and that's why it's called the vernal equinox by the way vernal form the word verdant which is green so it's oh. the greening of the earth nice yeah and you know all of the bulbs we planted in the autumn are starting to peak up now i don't know if you keep a garden or what's going on in your house but i've mm -hmm. got i don't have tulips yet but i have some daffodil daffodils right. blooming yes the rose has been blooming for a while the crocuses yeah. are all up and the yeah. hydrate um hyacinths are starting to peak up so it's just so exciting to see life return to the surface of the planet you know right, right. and it reminds us that winter is not forever no matter how much it feels like it sometimes right 
<laughs> it's a cycle, and there's going to be life that rises, and then eventually it's going to be harvested, and it's going to go dormant again. So it's really quite beautiful when you track it that way. Right. So there are three right. different ways that you can celebrate the equinox that I'd like to talk about today. Great. Uh, two in particular that are just wonderful. And one is that on the wheel of the year, the Celtic name for the equinox is Ostara. And I've seen it spelled a couple of different ways, O-S-T-A-R-A or E-O-S-T-R-E. You know, the Celts had a very different way of pronouncing their uh, alphabet. And uh, But the origin of the word Ostara is the same origin as estrogen. So it's speaking to the fertility of the earth. Okay. So now we can look to all of things, uh, you know, everything that we want to fertilize in our lives, right. things that we want to make fertile and have grow and come into fruition. Right. This is the beginning of that. This is when we start it. So, you know, for any growth to happen well, it has conditions have to be good. Right. And so this would be the time if you keep a garden where you're probably cleaning away the dead leaves from winter mm -hmm. and maybe augmenting the soil with fresh compost or some of the colder, um, you know, plants that like to germinate in the cold, like peas and poppies. This is the time to be sowing those things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like kind of getting it going. Right. So when you think in terms of fertility and then you think in terms of what do I need a fertile balance for to have things grow well in my life? Mm -hmm. Those are great thoughts to pull together for any sort of like magic making that you want to make or setting intention and how to utilize what's happening naturally on the earth to really, you know, use the momentum of the rising energy mm -hmm. to manifest those desires. Mm -hmm. So planting seeds is a beautiful and mm -hmm. perfect that you can do and we plant seeds of course there goes my phone right, right? <laughs> let, me see, let me see if I can figure out how to mute it let's just see about I'm so sorry Krista. that's okay this thing happened <laughs> I'm sorry anyway so this is the time to be thinking about what uh, seeds you want to be growing in your life and whether those are actual seeds for your garden or the seeds of a new project right. or, or, you know, a healthier way of living or whatever it is that you really want to see happen in your life. This is the seed and the fertile time. Mm -hmm. So a very simple ritual would be to actually do some planting. But if you do it within sacred space and you do it with a sacred intention, it mm -hmm. becomes more than, you know, well, how will my peas grow, right? right. So, <laughs> so sorry. I'm going to do that again. Um, so now it becomes, you know, I'm going to bless the soil in this pot, right? And I'm going to add the fertilizer to it. And as I mix it up, I'm going to think about the mix of things that need to happen. And I'm going to choose the seeds that perhaps might represent what it is that I want. Like, um, I remember doing a very powerful ritual once with sunflower seeds. Mm. And I chose sunflower both because they're so strong, of course, and they're so beautiful. But also they kind of grow slow. I mean, they don't grow slowly, but they take a while to bloom. Right, right. So plant them early, but you don't really see those blooms until late summer. Right. And I don't remember now exactly what the intention was, but I know that I chose sunflower because I wanted – to keep the longevity of this intention going over a few seasons. So sunflower was a perfect example, a perfect kind of seed for that. So it really doesn't matter what the seeds are that you choose. It could right. be for flowers, it could be for vegetables, you know. But if you hold on to those seeds and you set an intention in your heart and you imagine that that intention is like drawing from you down into the seeds in your hand that you then plant and cover them and water them maybe say a blessing over them. That's a beautiful, simple ritual to do. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when it starts to, you know, when they germinate, those little seedlings come up. It's just so exciting. It's joy. It's totally <laughs> joyful. And you also know, oh, you know, my magic is working. Right. And it starts to happen. Exactly. Exactly. I, uh, I plant my tomato seeds. I have, um, I'm on the fifth generation of these particular tomatoes. I always save some at the end of the season. Uh-huh. And in the spring at, a, at a Imbolc, I plant them again, and I have them on the windowsills, and they're just starting to come up now, and I just know they're going to be delicious in the autumn. Exactly. Now. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So planting seeds is a great thing to do on Ostara or any time around the equinox um, to bring in balance mm -hmm. uh, or to bring in your intentions. And because the equinox is about balance, it's not a bad idea to be thinking about how you can bring balance into your own life also. Mm -hmm. So let's say, which I think is true for most of us, we're working too much, we're working you know, too many hours, we don't ever feel we can unplug and let go. So maybe at the equinox we just decide, I'm truly going to work for eight hours. And mm -hmm. when the clock says eight hours is done, I'm done. Right. And as a, as a way to just show ourselves we can find balance. Maybe we're procrastinating about a project that we really want to get going, mm -hmm. and um, we just keep finding a million and one excuses not to tend to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe bringing the balance back is to actually become an action. You know, if we're not exercising enough or we're not eating well, mm -hmm. you know, these sort of holidays are the perfect time to set those intentions and get them going because you're utilizing the energy of the earth. Right. It's so it's very conducive in that way. Right. Yeah, and when you're in tune with the with the energies of the earth like that, it really gives whatever you're doing, your practice or your intention, it really gives it a, a boost because yeah. you're using the the energy of the earth in addition to your own energy. Right. Yeah. Right. That's like why not? Right. You know, not use it. This is what's happening on the planet anyway. If we tune in and utilize that, it just is it helps helps big time. It you does. know, we don't burn ourselves out, right? <laughs> So that's one way that's really wonderful. And the other way is uh, another thing that you can do around the equinox is working with eggs. And, you know, this is funny, too, because here's another, uh, another magnificent connection to Easter and the Easter Bunny. So, you know, I always wondered, why does the Easter Bunny have eggs? Why right. isn't it an Easter chicken? You know, like, what, what, what happened there? And, um, but then coming to understand that, you know, it, it's the time of fertility on the earth, what's a more, um, a stronger symbol for fertility than an egg or rabbits? Right. <laughs> rabbits certainly seem to procreate pretty quickly. Yes, they Actually, do. They don't procreate so quickly. It's just that their uh, cycles are only about a month long. They right. can pop out offspring in a month, yeah. one month. Yeah. So it's a very short gestation period. That's why they seem to just... Multiply like rabbits. Right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Ostara, you know, uh, she was the goddess of spring, and she brought uh, a Germanic goddess of spring, and she brought fertility back to the land, which, of course, the egg is the perfect symbol for fertility and potential. Mm -hmm. So what we used to do in our rituals a long time ago, I had a smaller group that I used to practice with, and everyone would make a hard-boiled egg, and then they would decorate it, write on it or draw on it, what it is that they wanted to grow in the spring. Mm. So it was a great creative project as well. And then we would bring them to the ritual, and we would share what was on our egg, and then we would make what we came to call the sacred egg salad. We would peel the eggs, the eggs would go in the compost, and we would mush it up with some mayonnaise and salt and have it on crackers with carrot, carrot juice for our little snack at the end of it. And it was a way of setting intention on something that is a very fertile symbol and then taking it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was more than just, oh, isn't this egg pretty and isn't it nice to decorate it? Mm -hmm. um, it's also lovely. But there was something about actually getting the nourishment from that right. egg also right. really helped get those intentions going. So those are two beautiful ways and really simple ways that are um, – just great ways to celebrate the equinox. I love both of them. And I, with the egg thing, I also like that the group shared their eggs. Yes. By making yeah. it into egg salad together. And it's like the, the symbology of the group support for your intention. You're supporting one another. Yes, we're nurturing one, each other, mm -hmm. one another. And, it, you know, it was just so odd because it was so delicious. Now, I mean, I like egg salad anyway, but right. there was something about that egg salad. Right. So much. Oh, this tastes so good. You know, it's especially magically delicious, I think, right. um, because of the intention behind it. So that's another way that you can do that. Of course, dyeing eggs is a pretty right. strong Easter ritual anyway. Right. And, and Easter also, the word Easter mm -hmm. comes from Ostara. I'm sure it does. <laughs> and Easter is also determined in a very, very pagan way because, you know, the date for Easter changes year after year. And it's always the Sunday after the full moon after the spring equinox. That's how they determine the date for Easter every year, which is so interesting because it's such a pagan way to right. 
determine that date when it's such a Christian holiday. It's like, Isn't it? <laughs> no roots in there, you know. Talk about stealing an idea. <laughs> Yeah, co-opting some of those. Steal the whole, yeah, steal the whole. You're you're nice to say co-opting. I say stealing it, but that's okay. (laughs) Taking it on, co-opting it. And it's just interesting how, you know, the Christian calendar has done that. And I understand why. We know they were trying to get the pagans on board, and it worked to a degree. Yeah. Exactly. Also, whatever comes after always takes a little bit of what came before. Right. Exactly. Like, where do we start completely from scratch? It's usually, oh, we're starting with this as a foundation. How can we morph it to suit who we are and what we're doing? Right. That's We've seen that in history over and over and over. And it's certainly right. part of our religious history. But I just love to think about that, you know, like what the true roots of that mm-hmm. are, yep. you know. I agree. It's pretty cool to understand where it all comes from. Now, I know many, many of our viewers aren't here in the Seattle area, but um, and many are. So what are you doing with uh, Gaia's Temple? Gaia's Temple has an equinox ritual that is open to the public. Everyone is welcome to come. You can go to our website, uh, which is www.gaiastemple.org. And on the events page, there's some information about it. It is going to be right on the equinox proper. So it's Tuesday night, March 20th at 7 p.m. It's here in Seattle. And we actually have our planning meeting for it tomorrow night. So I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out. But these themes will certainly be in there. You know, about the feeding of the earth, the return of life from door dormancy, planting our seeds, perhaps, mm-hmm. setting intention for the growing time. Right. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful ritual. We have a lovely community, and there's always new people that are coming, mm-hmm. too. Um, I think sometimes people think, oh, that's them, and you know right. you know how we go to a new place, and you think everybody knows each other, and I'm going to be the outsider and the right. stranger. <laughs> but it's really not like that. I mean, we certainly have a you know a loyal core of people that sure. come time again, but there's always new folks, and we keep it very lighthearted, you know, trying to get too serious about things. And I mean, it's serious magic, of course, but you right. know, we keep it fun and lighthearted. So everyone's welcome to join us for that. Yeah. And then also, if people are interested in some private sessions, I know you do. I know you give speeches and talks and, and things like that, but you also work privately with people. I do. I have an office right by Green Lake, and that's where I have my private practice, where I do psychic work and spiritual counseling. I'm a hypnotherapist, and I do uh, shamanic practices as well, and then I do some teaching there as well. So, That's yeah. Great. Keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to, to our viewers and explaining this holiday, and um, I just love it because it gives people an idea of, of a different way to kind of integrate the, the season. And that's one of the things that, uh, that I know we've talked about before. It isn't just one day. It's a season that goes is, through, the, through to the summer. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. And it's also a wonderful way to have a larger context mm-hmm. for our seasonal journey. Right. You know, anchor it in some spiritual roots so that it isn't just, oh, it's warmer, I can take off my sweater, oh, it's hot. It's really like, what is happening on the earth, and how can I align with those energies so that I can live more closely connected to the earth, which I think is really necessary. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and um, I'll look forward to talking to you again um, when June comes rolling around. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Judith certainly gave us some great ideas and ways to celebrate um, the spring equinox. And, you know, if you're not close enough to go to Seattle and actually go to Gaia's Temple, there's no reason why you can't do some of these things either on your own or with your family or with a group of friends. Get a few people to come over to your house or to somebody's house or a community center or somewhere and actually do a, a ceremony like this where you can actually celebrate this time of the year and let it carry through for the whole season, like she said, um, rather than just thinking, well, it's one day. And, you know, if you're watching this after the equinox, so what? <laughs> you know, make any, any day can be your own personal spring equinox. And... I always like to say, you know, if you don't like the way your life is going for one reason or another, just start over right here, right now. And it's the same thing with the spring equinox. Um, Even if it's already happened, you know, have it right here and right now. Time is an illusion anyway, right? (laughs) And I do encourage you to um, go to Judith's website 
and learn more about what she does. And also, if you aren't a regular uh, visitor to NewSpiritJournal.com, you might want to stop by there because we publish really wonderful articles and videos and audios every week. There's new material that goes up. And there's a way that you can join our email list there where you'll get some free downloads. And uh, you'll get my Wednesday inspiration where I write um, a little blurb once a week that people tell me they really like and look forward to. And then every Sunday we send you a link with what the new articles and stories are that have gone up. So I encourage you to do that as well. Thank you for watching and uh, remember to stay grounded. Keep your feet on the ground. Be involved in your own life and make your, your spirituality practical. Keep it real. See you next time.